beautiful people. Welcome back to another episode of Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal, where we interview phenomenal experts from around the world. And we're here with the phenomenal, the fantabulous Giselle Bonds. She's a brand photographer. She is an entrepreneur that's been in business for not one decade, not two, but three decades and beyond. And we're so excited to have her. She came straight from the Bay to sit in the chair and be here today for the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. Giselle, how you feeling? I am good. I have I, the adrenaline is pumping because literally straight from the airport into the Uber, like y'all, my luggage is outside the doorway, but I'm just so happy and honored to be here. And because girl, your brand's a big deal. And girl, your brand's a big deal. <laughs> So tell us a little bit more about who Giselle Bonds. Well, I'm just your average regular schmegular brick and mortar entrepreneur. I did that for 31 years and 11 months. We'll round up to 32. Um, I released the space during COVID. But my journey um, as a photographer, I was all things portraits. So I would do your families, your couples, your weddings, your debutante balls. But in 2016, I decided to niche down and focus on personal branding, photography. And that allowed me to serve in a more unique and specific way because my bachelor's is in advertising and marketing. I'd work for um, Fortune 500 companies in that space. And I've always been fascinated about what motivates people to buy. And I love social media. So personal branding photography allows me to combine all my life's energy and experiences in a way to really help my clients become more visible. Let's talk about this transition from having a portrait studio to getting on the internet. Also what Giselle calls the ground game versus the air game. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Let's talk about how you transitioned and then definitely the ground game versus air game. Well, well, Dr. Adu, you're a big part of that story because I went through very difficult time with caregiving twice, Mm. once with both my grandparents and my aunt, and then again with my mother with cancer. And on the day that she died, my my landlord had been trying to call me to talk to me. I was like, what? What's going on? You know, I'm on hospice care. Why are you trying to reach me? Can we, is something wrong? Can we meet on the phone? Oh, no, nothing's wrong. We just haven't talked. So literally the day she passed. I left Mm. the funeral home and went, like, what? And he says, well, you've been a great tenant for 20 years, always paid your rent on time, but I'm not going to renew your lease. But I have a smaller space available if you're interested. And that required me to do a demolition of the space, move into a temporary space, because he wanted me to switch stores with someone who had just been on the block for three years. So it was just very traumatic. Like, it broke my spirit because I was just so exhausted. But that was also the year I had decided to niche down. And that was 2015. And I got on a little app called Periscope Mm -hmm. and I loved it. And then they announced they were doing Periscope Summit in San Francisco, which was 10 10 minutes from me. I said, well, you love the app was the worst thing that could happen. It changed the entire trajectory of my business. I met amazing black entrepreneurs from all over the country, France and England. It was everything and understand something in 2016 i had been in business probably i don't know 30 years and a lot of my brand identity was based upon the fact that i was a brick and mortar entrepreneur Mm -hmm. i found myself in this room full of unicorns who stood on business about the fact that they were location independent and can work anywhere that there was wi-fi and i thought to myself so what can i sell that i don't have to be in the room for because as a portrait photographer I had to be in the room. So it was a mind shift thing. And then I discovered the coaching industry and how people were taking what they knew and turning it into marketable products and services and courses and programs and memberships and mind blown. And I was like, this is like this whole invisible world that the rest of the world doesn't know about. So I I like to describe it like Hogwarts, like the wizards know that money's moving in these digital streets. But the muggles or the mortals don't. And so it's been a fascinating journey getting to know you and other digital entrepreneurs. And and it's my business is completely different because of that. And it keeps you on the road. Like right now, you are stationed in Atlanta, Georgia. You just got in from California by way of the Bay and you're here setting up shop here. So how has that been traveling and still running your business? 
Well, the traveling is running my business. Mm. So one of the decisions I made at the end of 2015 was like I had already manifested that I could do events and weddings and, you know, out of town. I'd even done a 50th birthday celebration in Puerto Vallarta. So I knew I could do that. 2016 was when I said, what if I could make my studio fit in a suitcase? Mm-hmm. And so that changed everything. And understanding also that digital changed my market a lot. When I got started, you looked mm-hmm. at a camera, professional camera is a big old hunk of glass and metal. And you knew you needed to go somewhere to learn how to use it. Digital comes along. There's a computer in the camera. There's a YouTube video. You can get a business card. And everybody became a photographer. But had they studied the craft? Mm-hmm. Did, they, did they know lighting? Did they mm-hmm. know facial analysis, corrective posing, how to guide someone and and take down their armor so they can be authentic on camera? No. And the result is you have a lot of people out here with cameras that are just committing malpractice with a lens. And the symptoms of that are people walking this earth saying things like, I don't take good pictures. I'm not photogenic. Mm. That's not your job. That's my job as a photographer to pose you, light you in the way that shows you confidently and at your best. So the world is very different. So the personal brand is also a way for me to differentiate myself from all the noise that has suddenly popped up in my industry starting around 2008. Let's let's deep sea dive in this world of personal brand photography, why we need it, why it's so important, because we're on the Girl, Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast and the people want to know. Well, we are now in a soundbite world. And I'm not saying that long form content doesn't have its place because it does. But before you can get someone to dig into your long form content, you've got to get their attention. Mm -hmm. And I liken it to when you were a toddler. You think about it when you were a little kid, did you want the book of all words? Did you want the book of pictures? Mm. So I always coach my clients to think of their brand photos as what you get people to pay attention to stop scrolling. Get their attention, pattern interrupt, as you like to teach us, and then pay attention to the message. So we've got to get where we can talk in words, basically. We're in this visual society. So when we're telling stories and our pictures are telling those stories, so it's so important. When do we need to, or how often do we need to have brand photography done? It's so important because as mar- as marketers, we understand the no like trust factor. Mm-hmm. And there are two things that are going to get you the fastest to earn no like trust. And that is live streaming and brand photography, because those two things are the most effective tools you can use to get people to feel like they know what it's like Mm -hmm. to work with you before they work with you. So I would say if you're serious about your marketing and you're putting out the content to stay top of mind with your prospect and your clients, you need to be doing that thing at least once a year. If you're really grinding and you're launching and you've got landing pages and lots of content, more than that, quarterly even. Holler at your girl, Giselle Bonds. She travels. If you know it's time for um, some new images to stop the scroll and for our, our, all of these marketing campaigns that we do. Well, before we talk about that, tell us the difference between what is air game versus ground game. It's one of so, Giselle's coined phrases. So that's terminology I came <laughs> up with because being a brick and mortar business owner, I understood old school marketing. I know how to work a chamber of commerce mixer like nobody's business. I know how to exhibit in a hall and have a table or a booth that's engaging and I can interact with my prospects. I know how to buy a direct mailing list by zip code with demographics for the my target market. That's ground game. The strategies that I've been learning since 2016 using digital marketing tools and online advertising, I like to call that air game, you know, building funnels, setting up lead magnets. And initially in 2016, I was just so enamored and I was just like, oh, all the ground game people need to learn air game. And then there came a moment when I had this epiphany and I realized, oh, the air game people don't know ground game. And it is the combining of the two that will make you relevant. If you know how to work both ends of the funnel, baby. (laughs) <laughs> that's when you're cooking with the good grease. You got to work both ends of the funnel. I know one of our podcast guests would like that. We got to work both ends of the both funnel. Ends. And I love that part because Giselle has been like pounding this on me. You got to have your ground game. You got to have your ground game because us internet folk, 
we like to hang out with our funnels and our ads and our photos and imagery online and just sit on our laurels. But the world is different. And some of what we have to do is get back to the basics. And those basics are ground game. And, I, and I'm appreciative of Giselle who says it all of the time. You got to have both. You got to have both. And I know there's pushback on both ends. You know, ground it's game people, it's uncomfortable. Ground game people are apprehensive to what's happening online. And the online people, sometimes we're not receptive. It's like business never happened before the internet. And I can tell you when it became crystal clear, I was heading into Arizona to work with a group of women entrepreneurs and one had just been laid off. So she needed to quickly make her side hustle become her main hustle. Mm -hmm. And one of my SOPs that I had started doing was going on Eventbrite and looking to see if there was anything happening in the city I was headed to mm. that had my ideal client. Because sometimes you don't go to the room where you need to be to learn or to meet. You go to where your prospect is. And so I found this event and I told her, I said, well, did you know that the National Organization of Women Business Owners is having a mixer Friday morning? I said, my makeup artist is going to go. The only reason I won't be there is my plane will just be on mm -hmm. the tarmac. And she says, oh, I had never thought about going to something in person. And that's what I got. Oh, my goodness. It's a struggle. <laughs> I see these event bright events and I say, oh, I thought about it. I didn't show up. But we're getting but we're here. At an event, and we're getting better. I've improved, right? You've come a long I've, way. I've come a long way, okay? And I'm just appreciative of you because you've been in business for so long, and I and we've had this conversation. We were at a hotel somewhere in D.C., National Harbor, and we were there for like an, an, an event like this. And I'm like, how? And I was feeling down. I didn't make the numbers that I wanted to make that weekend. I'm like, how do you just keep going? Like, how do you make this happen when you don't hit your goals or something happens? How do you stay in business for so long, Giselle? What's the secret sauce? Well, I used to say I've been free too long. I can't go back to the plantation. And then maybe 10 years ago, it dawned on me. It was like, the plantation don't want me. <laughs> I've got to make this thing work because there, there is no going back at this point. And so I'd like to say I have to keep Madonna being like Madonna and just keep, met, you know, keep the Re metamorphosis. You got to keep rebranding, evolving keep and evolving. You can't you cannot stay stagnant. You can't stay stagnant. So speaking of not staying stagnant, there were some things that became apparent to you during COVID. 2019, December, we was like, we going to Jamaica. March 2020, the world shut down. And that was not happening. And that was going to be a fire. Reason. We was going to have a good time. Makeovers, okay. branding strategy. We was having a good Photo shoot. time. Okay. At the private villa with the chef in the, on the, in the on valet. The sea, on the Caribbean. On the sea. Staff of seven. I'm so <sighs> back, back to what we were originally speaking about. You had to make some pivots. Well... It's interesting because along with the traveling with clients, I started carrying a line of jewelry mm. to finish their wardrobe. So all of a sudden, everything started closing down. Matter of fact, we were in New York at the end of February. We were, we were in New York. That was the last <laughs> flight. Came home. Everything shut, shut down. down. So first, all my events were gone that I would have sold jewelry. The flights got canceled for all the events got canceled. I live in California. And so my governor was very clear. Oh, you're not essential. You shall not be open. I was like, well, what am I going to do? Because I'll be honest with you. In 2016, when I mentioned I didn't know what I could sell virtually, it took me a while to figure it out. But then I got stuck in internal terrorist syndrome and I wasn't moving forward. The spring of 2020, I had nothing else to sell but my mind. And so that that pushed me out the starter blocks where I had been treading water for a couple of years to launch my brand visibility accelerator. And I launched it with what Zoom 101 for business, because we had been on Zoom since 2016 and I knew Zoom inside and out. And I knew at the top of the pandemic that the rest of the world was coming to, to Zoom. And so that was, that was my lead magnet. That was how I launched the brand visibility accelerator. And so now I show up and I teach two strategies a month. The alternating weeks are co-working because when I taught every week, we'd come back. Who did the homework? Nobody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now I teach something and the next week is co-working. So you're, you've got dedicated time to implement. 
And then we do once a month, we do content planning. And with that, my, my members get a, a content posting schedule. So they know, okay, this is when I talk about my brand. This is when I do a quote and they get a set of Canva templates that are done for you. They can use them straight out the box or they can tweak them. And so there's some baseline content. And then what's been exciting for 23 was almost every lesson that we go through, there is a way to compress time and do it more efficiently using artificial intelligence. So there's been a big part of teaching that now. And Mm. that's really important to me because just like when I met you and I was excited about making sure people in my community knew how to live stream, artificial intelligence is that next piece where I'm so concerned that black folk are going to be left behind. There's like two narratives I keep hearing. One, AI discriminates. Well, so what? We're used to working in vacuums where it's bias. Mm -hmm. So get in there and do what we always do, make it work despite the bias. And then the other narrative I keep hearing is, well, AI is going to take jobs. But at the end of the day, AI is not going to take your job. The person that knows how to use AI is going to take your job. And you cannot be competitive with Chad If Chad is using artificial intelligence and you aren't, how are you going to keep up? So I'm very committed this year in making sure that people in my spaces, folks that look like me, understand the power of it and that it's not mysterious and that we can use this to do better, be more efficient. It's You can get a virtual employee. It's it's like legal slavery. (laughs) They're going to love that one. It's legal slavery. But AI, it's super important. Just like, you know, we were pioneers on Periscope and live video. Now it's more prominent. And we're still in the infancy stage of artificial intelligence. It's been around, but this new iteration of it is brand spanking new. You still have an opportunity. And I think about like the hidden figures and how they made sure that they understood computers because computers were going to take away their human ability to do the mathematics that they were doing the calculations and they knew computers were going to replace them. So instead of just allowing them to be replaced, they learned how to use this technology. And we, and I see that happening now. So I love how you're doing this in your community, the brand visibility accelerator. Tell us a little bit more about your community. Well, you just, you hit the nail on the head. It is about community. And, you know, last year I, when we did end of the year surveys, you know, to a person, the, the community was what's important because, you know, if your entrepreneurship can be lonely mm-hmm. and, you know, and if you don't have friends and family members that are entrepreneurs, they don't understand. I remember 30 years ago that I didn't understand it when it was happening, but my friends and sorority sisters and family, they literally pulled back. Because for a young black girl in 1989 Mm. to be starting a business, like they thought I lost my mind. My mother and my aunt lost it. It's like, what are you going to eat? Throwing away your education. Don't you think we had a dream? You need a job. You need security. So you have to find like-minded people that understand your vision Mm -hmm. and pick you back up. Because you ask that question, how do you keep going? You got to have your A team that's going to help you dust yourself off and remind you that that was just a knee scrape. Get back in the ring. Have your A-team and get back to it. So yeah, community is really, really important. And to be able to celebrate and move the needles together. What's your big goal or vision for 2024? What's What's the word of the year for you? Well, at this point, it is making more noise. Got to make more noise. It's like, there's no, there's no space now for, for being quiet. We, I, I when I look back and realize that I have been using ChatGPT and MidJourney for an entire year now. Over a year at this point. And I'm of an age group where Black women feel like someone needs to come and tap you on the head with a magic wand and declare your expertise. And it's so time to be over that. You're blessed. You're in a generation that gets it. Um, your generation will stand on their authority. They don't have, you don't have a problem letting the world know. It. Yeah. So letting, like my grown and sexy understand that you really are an expert and those gifts and tools that you've acquired through the years, it's time to use them. And especially as we are looking at retirement age Mm. and you know, my clients have retirement on the horizon, but they know they're not going to the rocking chair. This is the golden season. We're finally at last. The kids are out the hair. Maybe the elder care is passed. You can finally do what you want to do whether that be becoming a consultant, starting a business. And for some of my clients, it's not even a revenue thing. 
It's about their legacy. It's about making sure someone else doesn't have to go through what they want to do. It's their passion project. And using air game is a great way to dig into that. It just opens up so many more avenues and possibilities. I want you to look in them in the camera and introduce yourself and tell us why your brand's a big deal. Well, greetings, salutations, and hello. I'm Giselle Bonds, your personal brand visibility strategist and photographer. I help my clients stop hiding behind their logos and become the face of their brand. Why? Because they can't pay you if they can't see you, hunty. And how can we stay connected to you, Giselle Bonds? I am Hey Ms. Bonds everywhere. H-E-Y-M-Z. B-O-N-D-S, even HeyMissBonds.com, but that's my social media handle. You can reach me there. You can follow me there. And let's let's get it together and make it happen. And beautiful people, that's the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal podcast. We're super excited that we had Giselle Bonds join us June 6th through the 8th in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Girl Your Brand's a Big Deal conference because your brand's a big deal, your brand's a big deal. And you got to have a little bit of that air game and some ground game and you can join us. We can't wait to see you in Queen City. Have a great day, beautiful people.